Hello all you wonderful Rise of Kingdoms players out there. This is Dragothian here. Today we're going to be going over the new 1.0.44 Ninja Attack. And I gotta tell you, as soon as I saw Ninja Gaiden, I started losing my S a little bit. Because if you're like me and a little bit of an older gamer, this should bring back memories, right? Memories of playing in front of the Nintendo, just sitting there for hours, jumping in between buildings, climbing up walls, throwing ninja stars at everything. Uh, yeah, so, so I was very interested to see the patch notes on this because I didn't know if maybe they were going to have some of the characters from Ninja Gaiden in there or not. I, I don't know, but let's jump into these patch notes and see what pops up. I know there's some changes coming to Heroic Anthem that we're going to be talking about, so I'm really curious to see what this looks like. Um, this is going to be a patch that happens on the 10th of March, first of all. Let's go ahead and go one by one. So Ninja Gaiden 3, again, shivers, right? Um, crossover event coming soon, roughly one week after the update. Hayabusa Clan rises again. Interesting. A limited time Rise of Kingdoms Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge crossover event is coming. So it doesn't look like these are coming with commanders. Okay, so that's, I guess, good. As far as the theme goes, Ninja Gaiden doesn't really marry up with Rise of Kingdoms from a you know, ninja perspective, I guess. I mean, we have samurai style commanders, but we don't really have ninjas. So that's a big difference. Number one, assembling scrolls, collect scattered fragments and put them together to form the Hayabusa clan secret scrolls. And at the same time, earn great rewards such as avatar frames and name plaques. Okay, interesting. We'll definitely be playing that and showing that with you guys on the channel. Dragon Ninja and Shinobi of the Shadows bundles available for a limited time. Buy them to get lots of rare rewards no longer in circulation that intrigues me that intrigues me quite a bit we will definitely be showcasing those bundles on this channel as well make sure you come back for those videos when i post them number two lost kingdom season of conquest optimizations okay so is this the baba changes that have been out there um let's see so since putting the season of conquest online everybody's given feedback they like to listen that's good um, adding more ways to gain crystals, increasing the number of crystals earned. That's good. Okay. So number one, significantly increased. I, I love the word significantly. That's good. Increase the number of crystals dropped by barbarians and barbarian forts. So again, activity breeds better things in the game. I like that. That's what I read from that. Number one, number two, increase the number of crystals awarded for completing bastion quests. Okay. That's good too. Cause they were pretty sad. <laughs> It was pretty sad before. You could do Bastion quests every day and barely make a scratch. Number three, reduce the difficulty of Bastion quests. I didn't really have a problem with the difficulty. Um, some of them, if you weren't, you know, putting some money to the game, the the training speed ones could get kind of stacked up a bit. But everything else to me wasn't too bad. Um, but okay, that's good. Making it easier. Again, not too bad. Reduce the refresh cooldown for Bastion Quest. That's nice. Reduce the power of Season of Conquest Barbarians. Okay. As well as the action point cost of attacking them. That's fantastic. So lower cost to attack them. Hopefully it's back down to a normal Barbarian. And when it says reduces the power, are we back to the 40 and less? Or are they still going to be the 55? And we just get the extra stuff for the same AP? We'll have to wait and see. Number six, the strategic view of the world map will display the location of Bastions. Okay, that's nice. Reduce the duration of Kehar the Hidden and Kehar's Treasure to 30 and 10 minutes. Okay, that's that's good, I guess. The following changes will only take effect in Seasons of Conquest, which begin after the update takes effect. Okay, so for number seven, I'm assuming that's basically to like, you know, help with people trying to use Kehar's to block, like with Lohar. I'm not sure. But the following changes will only take effect in Season of Conquest, which begin after the update takes effect. So these are these are for kingdoms that aren't currently in Season of Conquest KVK right now. Okay. Rework the combat-related buffs, which can be obtained at the Crystal Research Center. That's kind of vague. I'm interested to see what that actually is. Uh, increase the conversion capacity of Crystal Mines. That's nice. Greatly reduced. I wonder if greatly or significantly is better. I'm not sure with these words. Uh, greatly reduce the time it takes to upgrade the Crystal Mine and Crystal Research Center. That's good. Greatly reduce the time it takes to research Crystal Technologies. Also good. Help you save on those research speedups. Added Season Quests, which can be completed to earn a large number of speedup items. Okay. I like it. More rewards. 
added a lot of achievements, which grant crystal chests when unlocked. Okay, these chests can be used in the season, the next season of Conquest, to gain crystals. So you get them now to use in the next one, I guess. That's interesting. At the same time, for any kingdom that begins the next season of Conquest, after the update, one and a half million crystals will be given to each governor to help them get off to a good start. That is a good start. It's not bad. It's not like crazy, but uh, especially for the, the old cost, maybe the new cost, that, that's a pretty significant amount. We'll see. Um, we hope the above changes will bring a better season of conquest experience to all governors. At the same time, we apologize for any negative feedback. Okay. We'll be sending compensation items to governors from kingdoms who have already or are currently participating in the season of conquest. Please be sure to claim it. So make sure you claim it. Um, I will showcase those as well on my 307 accounts. Um, so that you guys can see what those look like. Lucerne scroll optimizations. People are saying that they're too difficult and they take too long. I don't know if I agree with that. We have thus decided to decrease the difficulty of Lucerne scroll quests and to make each event shorter. Specific adjustments are as follows. Lucerne scrolls has a brand new display. Okay, that should not help with the difficulty. Uh, number two, each season's duration has been reduced from eight weeks to five. That should help. And the maximum quest level has been reduced to 50. Okay, so 10 events per week. 80 is, was the old one at 8. And now it's 50 for 5. Reduce the difficulty of Lucerne Scroll quests. Okay. Uh, added quest rewards for Ancestors, Legacy, and Divine Inheritance. Okay. Okay. Um, also, you will now be able to purchase the Archaeologist after purchasing Treasure Hunter. So you got to purchase both now okay i'm not sure how i feel about number three because it says it says they're going to make it easier which again i so my personal view on this um if you're playing the game every day you shouldn't have a problem getting this done um even when i'm spread across five accounts and i play on all five of those accounts roughly um, I can usually at least get the 65, 70 or so, and then you can just, you know, throw some gems towards the last few if you want to, or you can just play a little more and get those last few. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. Uh, number four, other changes. We've noticed a number of issues with the kingdoms list and lost kingdom displays. So they're going to revamp the kingdom and lost kingdom list displays. Okay. And have renumbered the lost kingdom service to be more intuitive. Okay. In order to enable more governors to recruit powerful ladies. Okay, so this is what I wanted to really dig into. Um, we'll be adjusting the pace of commander acquisition after the end of season three. Now, once a, a kingdom finishes, Lost Kingdom season three, which, make which makes your kingdom a season of conquest kingdom. That's when that phase starts, remember from previous videos. They can choose which commander sculptures they will receive as rewards in the following Mightiest Governor and Wheel of Fortune events. I still need to clarify, and I don't think this does clarify the expanse of the commanders that you can choose from. So at the same time, we will be adding new ways to acquire commanders so that governors can access as wide an array of commanders as soon as they enter Season of Conquest, which is, again, immediately after KBK3 ends, okay? After a kingdom enters Season of Conquest, a new Legendary Tavern event will take place. Very fun. In which governors have a chance to gain sculptures for any commander their kingdom can already access. Now, to me, it says for specific details and schedules, please see the event page. So we'll go there after this. To me, the way this says any commander their kingdom can already access is this is this based on their release time or is this based on their kingdom age because if it's release time that doesn't help anybody because you're still not going to be able to get the later game commanders but if it's based on the usable kingdom age of a commander then that means you'll have access to everything that's 300 days or less which means you'll have access to all the way up to trajan and moctezuma so I need to know that <laughs> we need to know that right um if you know for a fact or maybe if this um when we go to the event page maybe it will spell it out for us 
Um, that's a question I've got. Uh, number four, the size of teams in Ceroli and Ian's will be increased from four to five. Okay, difficulty bosses will be adjusted accordingly. Interesting. Resources protected by storehouses can no longer be transported. So, so you can't you can't send your resources down to zero, I guess. Okay. As the dust settles on the battlefields of Osiris League Season 3. Season 4 is ready to begin. Fantastic. We've got Season 4 of Osiris League on the way. With brand new rules. Wait a minute. <laughs> with brand new rules. What are the brand new rules? I will find out for you guys. More pre-match coverage. I'm probably going to be involved in that. So I'm looking forward to that. And even more in-depth statistical analysis. Love it. Get ready for the greatest showdown ever. Stay tuned. I'm excited. I'm definitely excited about Osiris League. That looks really fun. We'll give some feedback later as well. But I want to hop into the in-game forums. So this is what that should be. This is what I think of whenever I see it. So there you go. There's the Ninja Gaiden attack. Update 1044 Ninja attack. All right. So it says more information should be here. But I don't know if there actually is more information. All right, so let's click it. Event calendar. But it's not going to be listed here yet. All right, so I guess we're not going to know just yet. Let me check here again. All right, guys, so I went through the page a little further just to try and dig into some things. And... I couldn't find anything explaining some of the questions that we had. So I'm going to send those questions over to the developers and see if I can get some answers for you all. I will pin a comment once I get those answers from them. And hopefully we can get some more information on some of the nitty gritty details that we're going to be facing um, in the coming update, which is just six days away. So just under a week, it's coming very quickly. Um, so with that being said, I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I hope we've gone through this pretty well for you. Um, and again, we're going to find some more information out hopefully within the next few days so that we can get some clarification on some of those descriptions. I hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Have a good one. Take care.